What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and I have Super Mayor Tiffany Henyard here with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, thanks for coming up. And the reason they call you the Super Mayor mm -hmm. is because you're the mayor of Dalton, Illinois, but you're also the supervisor of the township, yes. right? Which is 190,000 people. Yes. And then the mayor of Dalton, which is 23,000 residents. Yes. Okay, so explain um, the difference in both of those positions for people who are listening. Sure. So if you know anybody that's a mayor, they are over services. So that means like if you got street lights out, sidewalks, pavement of alleys or streets, things of that nature. And if you are somebody that's a township supervisor, you over resources. Okay. So you have paid a light bill, gas bill, water bill. I do mortgage and rental assistance. I even help you bury your loved ones. Okay. So that's the difference. And we have a food pantry. That's crazy that you have both of those positions. Yes. Is that a is that a rare thing? It is. It's only I think two or three that I know of that has uh, dual seats like me, meaning mayor and supervisor. Mm -hmm. But there's plenty of elected officials that have multiple seats. Okay. Because yes. I always think a mayor is like such a mm -hmm. full time job that kind of occupies all of your time. And and, and it does, but mm -hmm. it's considered part time in my community. Okay. So I'm able to do other things too. All right, and you have been in the news a lot, so that's why I'm glad yes. that you're up here today to clear up some things. Yes, I'm here to lay the mess to rest. Because the way they make it seem like you cookie from, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know that yeah. that's the way they make it seem like you're walking around, you got all the security, mm -hmm. dressed off fly. Mm -hmm. And so I know part of your position is that you are able to have security detail Correct. with you. And most mayors do. Yes. I know our mayor definitely does. And I've mm -hmm. been around to know, see other people have security. Yes. It comes with the seat. But I also see that um, I was able to get some of these messages mm -hmm. because you do get voicemails, but also uh, emails of people that have been threatening you. That's correct. Um, some of them are, can I, do you mind if I read? Sure, you can Because I know this could be triggering. I don't know how you feel about this, sure. but okay, you're a effing crook, you ugly B. You will be in prison soon, so get that nasty, greasy black vagina ready for Shaniqua. The inmates will love to have orgies with the racist, crooked mayor. All right, to move on to some more. Um, hey, Grifter, maybe learn to effing speak English sometime. Your grammar is atrocious, but I guess that's what can be expected from a mayor who looks like you do. I mean, these, are, these aren't even the worst ones, by the way. I just mm -hmm. want to say there's a lot more in here. Mm -hmm. Somebody called you a despicable, savage, monkey, N-word B. Mm-hmm. And told you, you better watch your back. And then I did hear some of the uh, voice messages. One just says, F all you goddamn N-words. Um, and you are the first black woman to be in this position. Yes, in both positions. In both positions. And the youngest. And the youngest, yes. So w did this start happening once the news was reporting on what, and we're going to get into what the news has been reporting, but did this start happening before the news reported on you or after? This happened when the news started reporting on me. Mm -hmm. Now, we got something, some emails or some things here and there, but it wasn't this bad. It got worse once the news got involved because they got a national platform. Right. So people tend to believe what they see on the news. And they just report things. Anybody can go do an interview with them with no fact checking. Anybody can say anything, and then now that's considered defamation of character. And then now you have to go clean it all up. Because now people need to put you out there in a the bad light and people tend to believe what they see on the news. And that's why I believe what Trump say when it comes to fake news. Mm -hmm. Fake news is true because I'm, I'm living it. I'm going through it right now. He, I believe Trump also said if you say something enough times, people will believe it, whether or not it's true. I believe and, that. And he definitely does that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. you did win 82% of the vote when I you did. ran for office. Landslide, yep. And a landslide victory. So yes. how in your town of Dalton do people feel about you now with everything that's going on? Because I would assume that matters the most. It does. So that's what I, I do. I still on the ground, boots on the ground. I never stop talking to my residents. I constantly have conversation with the mayor. Um, I also have a lot of outreach things going on where community is involved and community is engaged. Um, a lot of people tell me how they feel was good, bad, or indifferent. And I take it and I either go fix what they're telling me that I need to fix or work on, or you got people that's all the way, Team Tiffany. No mm -hmm. no matter what, hashtag, I stand with Tiff. All of my saying that. So I love that because my base is my base. Just like everybody out in the world have a base. No matter what people say, people support them. And you're from Dalton, Illinois, born and I raised am. there. Tell me something about the town because I've never been there. I know it's outside sure. of Chicago. Sure. But tell me if you had to describe where you're from, what it's like. Sure. So 
um, back in the day, it was a small suburb that everybody wanted to go to because we had every single restaurant you could name was on Sibley. And now it just turned into um, an area where it needed a little love because it was always ran and it was always corrupt. And that's why people don't know how to come out of the corruption uh, for our village. I'm fighting against corruption now. And that's why I'm being a uh, slander in the media because people want to have their way with me and they cannot and will not. So my town is still uh, comprised of majority black. Uh, in the past, it was majority white. When we moved there, um, I had friends like Heather and Susan. And also when we moved there, we had green carpet, uh, flower wallpaper, because it was majority <laughs> white so it just transitioned <laughs> I didn't know that was the time. definition of white I didn't, yeah, <laughs> green yeah. carpet and uh, floral yeah. wallpaper okay. yeah, it was just that was just like an older <laughs> uh, definition of white but it was just an <laughs> older crowd it was just an older crowd and it was more lax and what I mean by lax meaning you go there when you're like retiring mm -hmm. it's more how Dalton was that was that type of suburb but it is not now Okay, yeah. so what are some things that you feel like you need that you've been bringing to the city? Like you said, you've been doing a lot of different initiative, boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. So, what are some things that are necessary in Dalton? So, right now, um, again, we gotta put love back in it and get a hold of our youth. That's what's missing right now. Um, people don't raise the community. And we need the village to be raising our kids again. That's how it was, like I said, when I came in town. Um, your neighbors will watch you, get you off the bus. You will eat dinner with them till your parents come home. Things like that. That's missing. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm trying to do is bring those roots back to my community, which I love. Because I wouldn't be in this if I didn't love it. you got to love where you come from. And you got to start at home before you start outreaching to other communities and trying to build them. So when do you... Th okay, so we talked about the news and when they started attacking you. But... All right. I want to talk about some of these stories that we see in the news and I want you to be able to speak to them sure, sure. so that people can know, because I've even seen these stories, yeah. you know, here in New York. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right. So let's talk about it. Um, there was a person who said that he didn't contribute to your campaign mm -hmm. and therefore he was not able to get his license for his business. His business has not been able to operate. So it was basically e equivalent to extortion from what he was saying and that other businesses haven't been able to get their licenses because they didn't contribute to the campaign. So that's false statement. And that's what I mean about the news not doing any research. They just let people get on the news and talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this and then I'm going to go further into your question. Malcolm X once said the media has the power to make a guilty person look innocent and an innocent person look guilty. That's their power. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm sitting here telling my story today because that's exactly what they're doing to me. So with that being said, they put people like that in front of the, the cameras, went and didn't do no fact checking. If people want to know the truth, I'm going to do it on my podcast, Tiffany Here on the Move. On Spotify, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm going to tell and show the facts and the proof of whatever a business owner did not do as relates to their business. If they're not up to code, if they had a ton of shootings at their establishments, which a lot of them had these type of issues. Mm -hmm. But no one put that out there. But I am now. And I'm not the one to never, like, try to drag or talk about a business because you should handle it behind closed doors, meaning your business, before people put it in the a, in a spotlight and now you're being attacked. Right. Okay, so you're saying that this person's business was rightfully not able to get his license until he cleared up whatever it is that he needs to clear up. Correct. We so have documentation of all of that. And I can give it to you, too, and that way you can follow up and show the world. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. right, because we all got to yep. do our research. Yes. Now, you yeah. were on with Roland Martin, and that interview aired yesterday, and he yeah. was talking about your nonprofit. You have a charity. Well, you said you don't have a charity, Correct. but there's a charity. It has your name on it, Yes. right? It's uh, What is it, Tiffany Hanyard Cares? Tiffany Hanyard Cares, yes. Tiffany Hanyard yes. Cares. Yep. Um, and so he says... You know, it looked like it was your charity. There was video of you promoting this charity, but mm -hmm. you're saying it's not yours. Somebody's using your name. That's correct. Okay. So just to clear it up, um, when I say it's not my charity, I'm not a board member on the charity. I can tell you what they do with their day-to-day. What I'm responsible for is my mayorship and my supervisor position. And it's amazing how people are pinpoint on a charity when there's so much stuff going on with me as it relates to the two areas that I actually do govern. Mm -hmm. um, I do support the individuals that has the charity. Um, I am always an advocate for cancer because my mom had cancer. I feel they are good, um, wielded people as it relates to what they was trying to do or trying to accomplish. And I think people make mistakes. People didn't file paperwork and they blew it up into a story like everybody else don't file paperwork. I'll give you a prime example. If you have an LLC or something like that, 
that and you don't file and you go check and I check and see if you registered and it go say not in good standing. Right. And so you pay the seventy five dollars or one fifty, whatever it is, then it puts you in good standing. It's the same concept. It's just that people are are missing the, the point of it. And mm-hmm. I get that people really, really meant to help people, not okay. hurt people. Right. At running a non profit, we know uh a lot of times there are always issues with that, but they need to be able to account like where the money was going. But like you said, that's yeah. not your nonprofit. That is somebody else's, but your name is not on that. They just use your name, I guess, as a way yeah. to garner attention. Correct. Just what, what's your uh, way up? Yeah. So somebody go use that today. Yeah. Does that mean you got anything to well, do with it? Well, Angela Yee nonprofit, <laughs> I would be like, hold on. That's yeah. like, I would not yeah. want that. Yeah. But way up, anybody yeah. could use that. But if it was like my personal name on it, okay. I probably would not. I would not want somebody, unless yeah. I was involved in it and they came to me, because you would feel like, that's my name. Because yeah. you do know if something goes wrong, that's your name. And I agree. And, that's, yeah. and it's a learning curve. And that's what I try to tell people. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. So when you find out mistakes or things happen, you go and you try to fix it. But people got to be giving you the chance to fix it and not just beat you up so much. Right. It's just that a lot of these things are in the headlines. That's why I'm mm-hmm. asking, because I want you yes. to discuss it yes. head on firsthand. Yes. All right. Then there was a situation where it was a city council meeting and people said mm-hmm. they were not allowed to come up and voice their opinions in in this meeting they were blocked downstairs from being able to to ask questions well that's not true as it relates to being blocked if somebody was blocked or felt they was blocked they can always reach out to us um, because our meetings are like four or five hours long mm-hmm. so I don't know who's blocked in, in my village okay I'm, you know coming to comment you can go pull our board meetings up and you can see that everybody's not allowed to speak because it's before it's before we start our board meeting Okay. Public comment. All right, good. And then, and I, trust me, as a media person, I know that sometimes things are inaccurate, and I know that when there's a story being painted of somebody, you do have to go to the source and do some research. Yeah. Which I don't like clickbait, so I I always encourage people to make sure you read the full story before Mm -hmm. you do that. All right, the next thing um, people did talk about was finances, right? And they said, oh, she's traveling first class, staying at the Mm -hmm. Four Seasons, uh, blowing this money, Mm -hmm. and that money now, the company, the, the town used to be, uh, have a surplus of money, but now there's a deficit. But then I also see on the paperwork that I have mm-hmm. from your team that you guys have gotten the largest in the history of the city with $15 million in grants from people. And despite the adversity and the resilience, you know, your commitment is undeniable and you have all That's these true. initiatives that you've done. That's so true. let's talk about the disparity between those two stories. Okay. So one thing about me is I won't stop. I don't sleep. I'm going to keep going. While they talking about me, I'm still working. So when I'm still working, I still managed to get money to come to our communities. We was awarded $15 million. I had the largest in the history for Thorpe Township mm-hmm. and then the largest in the history for uh, the village of Dalton. So more than any mayor, more than any supervisor throughout all the controversy. So if a person was that bad, people wouldn't keep on supporting them because no matter what, this is all about helping the people. And that's why I think we're losing fo- focus right. when they do the stories. They don't talk about what I've done, nothing what positive. I've accomplished. Nothing positive. And I say, hey guys, how can a person be so bad and then do not one good thing, not one good thing in any story they write about me? Every story they write is negative. And I don't know nobody that could just deal with all negative stuff all day long mm-hmm. with none positive in their right. brain. I just I just can't get with it. And that's why you see me just constantly push through it because I told them before, we're going to go through it, but we got to grow through it at the same time. And that's kind of what I've been doing. And i just glad that you was able to mention some of the things that um, we actually created. Can I, can I go a little further with Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, so, this is your, this okay. is your <laughs> platform now. So we did a, um, and I'm sorry, I'm a little hoarse. We built a outdoor skating rink and um, roller rink, uh, ice skating. Yeah, ice skating and roller rink. So in the summer, they can roller skate. We had the JB skaters out there. And in the winter, they can ice skate. What I love about that concept is now we're giving people the opportunity to go to the Olympics, be who they want to be, to practice in our own backyards in the black, black and brown communities. We normally have to go to a different community mm-hmm. in order to engage or get practice or um, have swimming lessons, things like that. Right. My job is to create things for our community so that they can grow into what they want to be another thing that i do love about um what i've done is now uh the youth 
are following Tiffany Henry. The mm-hmm. youth know who a mayor is. The youth know who's a supervisor. They did not know that before. No one could point out, oh, that's the mayor of Dalton. Oh, she does this. Oh, she came to our school and spoke to us during Black History Month. Right. Oh, she helped us with mental health. We do a mental health tour. That's something really big that's going on nationwide, but right. no one's really talking about it um, on bigger platforms. Yeah, they go get the celebrities here and there, and people might give a little something about it, but it's happening everywhere. Mm-hmm. So when we went in there in the schools and we did the mental health tours, we was able to help kids and parents uh, identify that they needed help and give them help. That's what I do. But they okay. don't tell the heart of Tiffany and you. They want to tell the smoking mirrors and the clickbait. No matter what people do, if they write about me, I'm golden. I get it. I get why everybody doing it. They make money off of clicks. And I didn't know that. I'm learning social media <laughs> a little further, but I didn't know that that's how big it has gotten. How is this hand, uh, How are you handling this since we just talked about mental health and you discussed how important that is? But for you being in the position that you're in, and like you said, this is the first time a black woman has had this position, the youngest person in this position. You're still trying to do your day-to-day job, but yet there's a lot of articles that are disparaging towards you. How does that how do you deal with that? How do you cope with that? So basically, I have tunnel vision to the mess. I just keep going, ignore it. It's almost like a horse in a race. And they had a blinders on so they can't look left and right. That's Tiffany Heat. I just focus on my goal. My goal is to make sure I uplift the village of Dalton and the other 16 municipalities that I'm over. I'm over 190,000 people. I have to make sure I plant the seed now so that the kids can follow. I have to set the tone as relates to the footprints so they can walk in my footprints and they know what to do. And I want them to see what controversy looks like, adversity looks like, and how I'm going to come out of it in the end and show them that no matter what you do, Never, never, ever give up because you're going to always have somebody that don't like you, uh, upset with a decision you made. But th- the point is you made a decision. That's life. You have to make decisions and you have to give your your testimony. And that's what the test is right now. This is my test. And at the end of the day, I'm going to be able to tell you my testimony a year later, two years later. It's just like the, the giants before us. You got Martin Luther King. He had a dream, but I am the dream. Mm-hmm. And this is what I'm trying to show America, that you got to have hope and you have to prevail no matter what what people say about you. It's interesting because even though a lot of the attention that they're giving you in the media is mm-hmm. negative, yeah. it, it is bringing a lot of attention yeah. to your township yes. and also for a lot of people to say, oh, that's the mayor? Yes. You know, a young black woman is the mayor of, yes. uh, and also uh, the supervisor of the township. So yes. that is something that hopefully is going to mm-hmm. be on the flip side of this, something positive. When did mm-hmm. you know you wanted to run for mayor? Well, after dealing and fighting with uh, corruption uh, and people that was in the seat prior to me, I fought against it. And the people believed enough in me that they came out by 82 percent and voted for the first female. And people uh, got it all twisted when they say, oh, you just voted because she's black or because she's woman. No, that's not true. I've always been boots on the ground. I've always helped people. That's what people are not telling I feel like that's the opposite. Usually mm-hmm. people won't vote for you because you black or a woman. So, yeah, yeah <laughs> you yeah. know, so I don't yeah. see how that is. But the other importance is for people to be able to see you, right, and yes. be like, I could one day also be a mayor yes. and see that. So I had someone come to my board meeting. And he bought his daughter. He wanted to show her that women are leading now, which we are. We are in politics. Uh, We are at the front and not in the back. And that's what I appreciate about uh, residents that see through the smoke. They still appreciate me and they still want me to be a mentor to their daughters. And I love it. Now, there's also a federal investigation that's being called for. Mm -hmm. So where are you with that? And did you know about it like ahead of time? Because I know previously I've seen you say, I don't know anything about Right. I'm so, being investigated. so basically, um, there are no subpoenas at my office. And also, we don't know anything as it relates to what people are just alleging or saying, but we don't have any subpoenas. And from my understanding, there's no other, what do they call it, law enforcement that we know of have any investigations. Okay, so this is something that's a news story, but it hasn't hit you or if, it, if it's true or not. Correct. If it is true, you don't know anything about it. You haven't been subpoenaed or nothing. Correct. I also see in Illinois they're trying to keep Trump off the ballot, right? <laughs> I want to know what your thoughts of about Donald Trump running for office again. Oh wow, I don't have a, a leg in that race, so I, mean, I didn't know. I, just I didn't know, know what you think. I didn't know anything about that. I don't know anything about. Uh, you think he should be able to run? He should be eligible to run for president, or do you think with all of the legal issues he has and things that he's been found guilty of and convicted of that that shouldn't even be? something that should be allowed. 
well, this is America. Everybody have the freedom to do what they want. Look at what I'm going through. I can only speak to me. Um, everybody got freedom of speech, right? Look at people just say whatever. Mm-hmm. So, But I just think like somebody who's been convicted of so many things, mm-hmm. there's so many jobs you can't have. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I don't think president, that shouldn't be a job that somebody should be able to even run for, especially with the things that he's been convicted of. I, f- I find it to be wild. Mm-hmm. But I only ask you that because in Illinois, I know that's been a hot topic um, also just recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have time to indulge in anything else right now. I've been focused on my myself and how di- um, yeah how distracting is all of this for you based uh, as you're trying to get your job done too at the same time um it just show you that god got his hands on me because he won't give you more than what you can bear it's just to make me wiser make me stronger um because you learn through controversy you learn what to do what not to do and i feel that's what's going on right now so and you grew up there are there people that you're surprised like damn we grew up together i know you <laughs> yeah it is it's it's a lot of those because you'd be shocked off of gossip people really tend to believe gossip mm-hmm. and that's sad because that's a true statement of lack of knowledge our people will perish that's true and that's kind of what's happening so that's why you see me going out telling my story giving them facts and i tell them never judge a person and you shouldn't judge but if you are to judge at least get both sides because right now it's only a one-sided narrative mm-hmm. which is a negative narrative of tiffany Henry. is that why you decided you decided to do your podcast so you could fight all, right. all of these allegations but also for people to get to know you yes it's basically to give them another perspective because right now the news won't allow me to give my side we've reached out to several people and no one has mm. wanted to even interview me and normally people want to interview the, that the would big feel fish crazy. right i would think that yeah, if somebody's the, writing a story about you they yeah. would love to they would or even yeah. reach out to you for comment like yeah when they some reach of out these... for comment some of them but they don't always put them out Okay. And PR team, they, they give comment. And sometimes they cut half of the comment off of things that we're trying to put out. And they put what portion they want the public to know. And that's why that Michael Mack statement is really true. Mm-hmm. Like it's they, they are gearing and shifting people to what they want them to believe or want them to know. Would you run for office again? I, I am. I okay. definitely am going to run again for both my seats. So that's why they're doing a smear campaign because they cannot beat me. They cannot and will not beat me. So I just want them to know, bring it. But they bring it a different way because they can't beat me. I do have the hearts of the people. People do believe in me. I am a big influencer. And that's why you see all the smoke in the mirrors because they want to stop what my voice is and make them say, don't believe her because she this, this and that with no truth, no facts. All right. Now, explain this one to me, too. Now, I also mm-hmm. saw another article about. Um, your salary mm-hmm. was being called into question. And then also something that you put forth that the next person that is in office, if it's not you, would be getting $25,000, which is a lower salary than what you're getting now. So okay. talk to me about that and what that story, like where did that come from? Okay. So for my salary, a lot of people don't tell the truth. So I'm going to set the record straight. Mm-hmm. My salary was already there. It was from my predecessor. He had that salary, and all I did when I got sworn in, I took over whatever salary he had. So no one said none 30 years ago. He had it for 30 years, right? No one ever questioned that he make too much money. But today, when a woman take over, a young black woman, it's a problem. Why is that? Why all the noise over what someone make? As long as they're doing the work and they qualify for the seat, why do you have a problem with what they make? We all choose our career paths. It comes with different amounts. So Miles came with that stipend, and then um, the other amount was fifty thousand from my mayorship. Mm-hmm. So I got two different positions. Right, because the way they make it seem like you make two hundred and it's two twenty four for okay. supervisor, okay, and it's fifty for uh, mayor. Okay, but it's two different seats. But they, I didn't make the salary up. Right, it was, it was already, already there. there. So I just want to clear that up because people think that I came in and made up a number. I did not. Now, as it relates to the ordinance, um, I said this, too, on his show. Um, it's an ordinance that was already on the books that no matter who would have ran against him, he the, the salary would have went to $50,000 mm-hmm. no matter what. Okay. But no one researched it. Again, they just ran a story and they mm-hmm. put an ordinance up because everybody was complaining that, I make too much money. Okay, cool. We went, to, we went, pulled the ordinance, because that's how I found out about it. Mm-hmm. Pulled the ordinance, and then we just cut it in half. We went from 50000 to 25000 They making it seem that we went from 224000 to 25000 That's not okay. true. We went from 50000 to 25000 That's it. And then that's something else I'll give you. I'll give you the documents. You can put it on your screen to show the public. Because, again, the media is misleading the people, and that's what I have a problem with. 
This feels like a documentary or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that's coming. <laughs> oh, it is coming. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I feel like just from me hearing you talk about doing the the podcast, mm-hmm. and then now all these things that I haven't seen necessarily happen. And mm-hmm. I want to say, like, I know Hill Harper is running for office in Michigan, right, for Senate, mm-hmm. but he's been going through a lot. Oh, that really? He said he was very shocked at um, happening, mm-hmm. you know, in politics. Like, mm-hmm. you hear about it all mm-hmm. the time, but until you experience it, yeah, you don't know what it's like. That's true. You could have never anticipated any of these things happening, mm-hmm. I'm sure. No, but I knew that um, politics had a lot of corruption in it, but that's the issue. Um, when you don't play their game, because it is the boys' clubs, no matter what people say, this is what happens. They do smear campaigns on you. They try to put doubt in the people that support you, minds of your character, it's character assassination, it's defamation of character, it's all of the above. That is true. So that's why I always try to go talk to the kids because I want to encourage them to still believe in public service. No matter what it is, believe in that because they might want to run for office. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't have the credentials or have the money to um, go to school to be a doctor, a lawyer, anything like that. They can actually still help the public um, by being a public service. But they can start small, right. park district, library board, school board, and then work their way up to a municipal seat or a city seat. But just know that if you got the seat, the scrutiny come with it. It's new levels, new devils. That's what's happening right now. And you also, you have a daughter, right? I do, four-year-old. And what do you, so what do you tell her about what's going on? I know she's really yeah. young to really yeah. understand all of it, but are there times that you have to explain things like... Yeah, well, I, one thing I say about my baby, uh, Justice, is she's a, a beacon of light and she uplifts me. She say the darnest things at the <laughs> right times. <laughs> and she has a personality out of this world. And she always tell me, Mommy, never, never, ever give up. Keep going. I don't <laughs> care. And she just said that to us yesterday and it was just kind of <laughs> weird. I was like, oh, Justice. <laughs> it was just shocking because kids they, they go off your energy and they know what to say mm-hmm. so good. all right well good i'm glad you came up here because like i said i've been reading a lot of these things in the news so i might have had a different perception yeah. but i also wanted to make sure that you had a chance to come up and clear up anything because i also know how tough it can be as far as like what the news is saying and then when i saw these emails that you were getting and these voicemails mm-hmm. i think it's real you know, people don't understand. They'll act like mm-hmm. things are good. There's no more yeah. racism. Oops. And we're on a level playing field. Mm-hmm. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And when you see stuff like this, you see how alive and thriving racism really is. It is. It's still here. And it hurts because um, you wouldn't think we would be going through this because it's the 21st century. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going through the same thing that our ancestors went through. And it's sad to see it in the 21st century because you would think it was it's all over. So what I want people to know or take from this interview is that, hey, you need to get on board and help defend right. Don't sit here and let people just get dragged because, oh, that ain't my fight. It ain't your fight today, but it may be your fight tomorrow or in a year or your kid's fight. So that's why you're supposed to stop it now before it gets down 10 years later. And now you could have prevented what now your kid might go through because they might want to be a public service or might want to be a radio host or be anything. Mm -hmm. But you don't want them to have to go through them same barriers. And that's what my goal is, to knock down a lot of things. Uh, Like you said, the person that's running for office, people don't know until you sit on this side of the fence. A lot of people would not withheld the storm like me uh, because people not built for this. People would have been broke, been crumbled. They mental would have been gone, all type of things. So a lot of people, especially women, give me a lot of um, strength by saying, I commend you on your uh, fight against this because I would have been quick. That's what a lot of people say. Right. So I, I say, I just smile and say, hey, God didn't bring me this way. This far <laughs> to leave me. So I'm going to keep going. And I just stay prayed up. I keep him first. And he's been ordering my steps. And I love the fact that um, he gave me this opportunity because without him, I would not have this opportunity to have two big seats and be um, a trendsetter and be a trailblazer. So I love that. I have to ask, what do you yeah. do to take care of yourself? Like when yeah. you need a break yeah. for some self-care. So uh, my baby, uh, he takes care of me. Mm-hmm. He makes sure that I'm good. Um, I do a lot of uh, massages. <laughs> Got to decompress. I do a lot of that. <laughs> and, and my daughter, I'm telling you, that them my biggest support. And my dad and my mom, of course. But them that circle right there, they're my biggest support. They uplift me and my team. Certain people on my team, they give me spiritual um, guidance. They pray over me. Um, and also they always, always send me scripture, which I need. I mm-hmm. love that. Yeah, I always tell people the team is so important. It is. Like, you really got to pay attention to the team somebody has around them. That means a lot and says a lot, too. So I agree. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Mayor thank Tiffany you. Henyard, uh, Super Mayor. Sorry, yeah. pardon me. Um, and how can people find more information and follow you to get sure. firsthand information? So if you want, if you want the tea, get it from me. Go <laughs> check out <laughs> Tiffany Henyard on the Move podcast. Uh, I'm gonna drop the first one this week. Um, it's gonna be epic. It's gonna burn up the internet. Uh, and remember, I tell them if I ain't come for you, uh, if no, if I didn't send for you, don't come for me. So I just want people to know, uh, be prepared because I'm not gonna stop. I'm a fighter. Uh oh, she's not gonna hold back. We cannot wait to hear this first episode Barbs. of this podcast. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Way up.